Hello, what's up YouTube? Ronix with another video and in this video I want to show you the most common mistakes you do as a retoucher or the most common mistakes people tend to make when it comes to using frequency separation or using skin retouching or a technique known as frequency separation. So these are not going to be in a specific kind of order but I just want to point them out and maybe if I told you I've been making these small small mistakes you could check upon them and improve on your skin retouching process in Photoshop. So right now we are in the interface of Photoshop and this is the sample image you're going to be working with for this specific tutorial. So whenever we're doing frequency separation, there are some things that we always want to take into consideration every single time you're going to retouch our images. So right now, the very first thing I've noticed people do is when it comes to removing the blemishes or removing the imperfections in the skin this is the very first mistake most of you people tend to do so I see most people just come and maybe they duplicate the background and hit Control or command J or you can just drag and drop onto this new layer icon to uh, create a copy out of the background layer so just want to clean up or remove blemishes but before you remove blemishes make sure that everything you're doing on the image is really not causing any other artifacts onto the skin of the model. So I see most of people since I, since you don't want to spend a lot of time remo removing blemishes, you tend to choose the wrong tool for the right purpose. So let me show you guys the mistake you do. So since most of you don't want to spend a lot of time trying to remove blemishes, you come and choose the spot healing brush tool, which is I don't want to say, oh, I don't mean to say it is a wrong tool, but I just want you to look at this in this case. So I'm just going to choose it. So I just want to remove blemishes from the image. So sometimes it's going to work good, and sometimes it may not work good. I hope you can see what it has just created right here. So from a distance, you may not notice like the artifact or the mistake. So if at all I just come and paint right here, it is doing a good job, but when you zoom in, you can notice like that area has that kind of patch. So make sure that you're really careful. For example, maybe just want to clean up that and we select that area. So I think this is a better illustration for what I'm trying to mean. You can see that this has really created, let me just, and we can see it has created like this kind of patch and it has that kind of rough edge around it so meaning this spot healing brush tool is convenient for some parts of the image or some parts of the skin but for other areas it is not really a convenient way to remove those blemishes so you have to really be careful while you try to use it so while removing the blemishes you can really incorporate like different tools to remove the blemishes from your images so for this case if at all the spot healing brush tool works better for smaller areas, you can work with that. But for such big areas, make sure to work around with other methods or other tools for removing blemishes. For example, I could right click here and I get my patch tool. And the patch has to be normal and source and destination are really active right here. So for this case, using a patch tool, you just draw over the blemish so you left click and draw around the blemish and drag to a clean area to replace that blemish with an area close and that is going to be putting or pasting that clean area to that area where the blemish was so for this case if I wanted to remove this maybe I could come and draw around it just like that and I could just drag it to the area that is close to where the blemish is going to be replaced. So for this case, I could just do this. And you can see right now, it has done a decent job, but we have these rough edges. So I could just drag this like that. And you can see that we are still retaining the original textures in the skin. And we don't have that kind of patch that was created by using the spot healing brush tool. So you can even come and use the clone stamp tool. And for example, you can use, since we have a layer 
that has information can use current layer or even current and blow or even all layers so make sure opacity and flow at a one hundred percent and you can now do the same by sampling and painting over the blemish you want to remove for example if i don't want to remove this hold down the alternate key on the keyboard and click on an area or a clean area to copy skin from that area and just come and paste it onto the blemish so we just be copying and stamping over the blemish to clean or get rid of it so this is maybe what you have to check through as the person that is removing blemishes to clean up the skin so choosing the right tool is the best for you and you should choose the best tool that is going to help you do the job really well so a given tool can work better for you in some cases but you have to learn using different tools to remove blemishes from your images and they have a complete blemish removal tool i'm just going to link it above here so that you can learn about that in detail so just going to merge this and i'm going to play my frequency separation action to show you the other mistakes you people tend to do when it comes to using frequency separation i'm just going to come to my 8-bit frequency separation since this is an 8-bit image i'm going to play my 8-bit action and if at all you're interested in purchasing this and supporting this channel, the link is going to be in the description so that you can purchase or buy these actions. So just come and play my 8-bit action. And it is at this point when most of you tend to have bad results when it comes to frequency separation. So usually for this step, it is where you have to determine the amount of detail you want to remain with in your final image. So the details we lose here are the details that we are going to be remaining with our final image. So you have to move the radius up to the point where you just starting to lose out on this detail in the skin area. And for this case, at around 7, that is when I am starting to lose out. So make sure to stop on that point when you are just starting to lose out on the information or the details in the skin area. And hit OK. So I know you all know this because I've already sung all this in my tutorials. So the very first mistake or the other mistake you people tend to do is when it comes to evening out the skin tone and you want to uh, maybe start evening out the skin tone, maybe using a mixer brush tool and you have already set up a mixer brush tool. The mistake most people tend to do is leaving this layer checked or you don't uncheck this layer because when you leave this layer turned on it means that it's going to be sampling information from all these texture or other layers in the frequency separation group so for example if at all i leave this checked and i come and i start getting my mixer brush tool and i start painting on the skin it means that it's also painting the textures into the areas i'm trying to even out so meaning it is also going to be sampling information from this other layer and painting it on this selected layer. So make sure that before you do anything, this option has not been checked or activated. So make sure the tick is inactive and when you come to painting or evening out on the skin tone, you can see that it is only working with the colors or the skin tone of the model so that means that you are doing a good job right there and the other thing you want to do when whenever you're doing your frequency separation i see most people tend to do it with this texture layer visible and they don't have any whole player that is going to guide them when it comes to evening out the skin tones in various areas of the image so for my case usually in my frequency separation actions i usually put for you a black and white layer inside of my frequency separation action. So if at all you feel like you're not seeing those uneven skin tones in the images you're trying to retouch, just come and double click right here and you can darken the reds a little bit more. Since this model was really light skinned and right now you can see the areas you have to even out. So 
whenever you're doing frequency separation, always make sure that you have a check layer that is going to show you the uneven skin tones in the images. So for this case, after using a black and white layer and selecting it and adjusting it accordingly, you have to come back and select the low frequency layer and now you can use the mixer brush tool uh, to blend or even out those areas. You can see right now, you can see the areas that have an even skin tone transitions. You can see at this area right here. So just come and blend it. Or the other technique that I would recommend for you to see those uneven skin tone transition is maybe for example you don't have this black and white layer. Let me just delete it. And you only have maybe the low and high frequency layers in your frequency separation action. The other technique is simply coming to the high frequency layer and deactivating it. So when you deactivate it, it means that you are only going to be seeing the colors or skin tones. But don't forget to come back and select the layer that is containing the colors or skin tones. And just come. You can see right now, you can see the areas that have an even skin tone transitions. And you can just come and blend them or smoothen them and have those nice and even transitions within your photo or your image so you can see right there and just come and blend so how i'm blending i'm just painting or even evening out the colors that look alike within the image so that they can have that nice and uniform transition so we are blending while selected on the low frequency layer so that is the other mistake make sure that you have a check layer and for this case our check layer is turning off the texture layer and when you're done retouching or blending or evening out the skin tone, you can come and turn on the texture layer and you see the before and after for your evening out of the skin tone of the image. So the other mistake I see most people use or when they are doing skin retouching is maybe when they are trying to use the lasso tool as a technique of smoothing or evening out the transition within the skin tone. So when you come to the low frequency layer and you select maybe your mixer brush tool, the mixer brush tool is more like a knife. It has edges. So if at all the knife is really very sharp, it means that it's going to have a very sharp edge where it is going to be cutting. So that is how a lasso tool works. So in order to have the lasso tool set, just come and make sure the feathering is not on zero pixels because when you leave it at zero pixels and maybe you select an area, for example, this area, just going to sample even close to the eyebrows, you can see that looks okay. But when, I hope you can see that we are now on the lasso tool. So when we come to filter and we come to blur and come to Gaussian blur to blur out the details out of the skin. For example, if at all I take this up a little bit. Let me just overdo this and hit OK. And I hit Ctrl Command D to deselect that selection. And when I zoom in, you can see that it has created that this, this other ugly kind of line. Meaning the feathering of our lasso tool is really a sharp one so you have to smooth out the selection of the edges of the lasso tool and in order to do this better is just come and measure that your radius is between 22 and 25 pixels i would recommend that so if at all i do the same technique but with a different radius of 22 pixels i'm just going to come right back here and i make a selection and I come to Gaussian Blur. You can see that when I zoom in, we don't have those ugly lines that we had on the edges for the selection that we are trying to apply onto the image. So this is the other mistake I've seen most people do when it comes to this. And those people that use the lasso tool, when it comes to maybe applying the effect on the nose area, this is the other mistake I see most of you people do. You tend to come and apply the effect or you select the whole nose as a whole so remember when you select the whole nose and you come to filter blur and you come to gaussian blur 
and you move this radius accordingly, it means that uh, this is going to flatten the nose. Just look at this nose right here. We have really had a very flat nose. Remember we had a highlight and the nose tends to look a little bit bigger in size because and it even looks flat because we have gotten rid of this highlight since we have selected the whole nose as a whole. So for when it comes to the nose area just come and make sure you select the side of the nose. Right click and apply it and come to the different side of the nose. Select, right click, apply it and when it comes to this highlight and you apply your Gaussian blur just come and simply right click on that selection and you come to fade Gaussian blur and reduce on the opacity in order to retain this nice shine on the nose area. Remember we have applied the frequency separation but the nose is really still having the shape. So that is another mythic, mistake you people should take through and make sure that you're not doing that wrong. So the other thing I've seen let me just create a stamp visible for all maybe we have been doing when we are retouching. The other mistake is when it comes to whitening eye and teeth, this is the other mistake I've seen most people doing when it comes to doing that. So maybe you have been using the camera filter like I've always uh, told you on this channel and maybe the filter is loading. So when you zoom into the eye area, this is what most of people tend to do. When it comes to setting the adjustment brush tool, you tend to take the temperature all the way down. And remember we are removing color or yellow from the white area of the eye. Remember the opposite of yellow is blue. So you tend to take this all the way down towards the blues. And you tend to take this maybe you are at 60. And you pull the highlights like I always tell you and the whites. And you come the saturation and you desaturate it like a... I tell you and you come to the white area of the eye remember this is too much so just when you come and you paint in these areas you can see this may really look good to you yeah because you feel like you're doing a really nice and perfect job but when you zoom out the image the eye is not white for this case because you have moved uh, the temperature slider all the way towards the blue side you can see it looks blue in color depending on your monitor if, if at all it is really calibrated and it shows you accurate colors the eye looks blue and i've seen people post photos with blue eyes and blue teeth so make sure that you don't take the temperature all the way down and just make sure that you leave the eye looking as natural as possible i wouldn't recommend you to go above negative 25 if, if at all you want a whiter eye just don't go below negative 25 and this looks really natural if at all i zoom out you can see that it looks somewhat natural but the eye looks white as opposed to take doing this and the eye looks blue and robotic and unnatural so this is what you have to check through and those are some of the mistakes you people tend to do when it comes to using frequency passion and also doing the eye and teeth whitening so if at all you have learned something new from this video don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe if at all you have been watching from this channel for the very first time Ronix from Ronix Photography thank you for watching I'll see you in yet more tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and check on those mistakes and keep creating